Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch, I'm Eddie the Chump and today we're going to be talking about some of the big changes that are going to be coming to Overwatch in the future. A lot of this video will be based on some of the answers that Matt Hawley and Scott Mercer gave in the recent interviews that we got to conduct in Korea. Now there were some things that were explicitly mentioned but also we're going to be reading between the lines of what they actually said and extrapolating out what we think are some fairly reasonable conclusions. Now there's some good news and some bad news to start with as it appears that some things that we knew were coming, like the new social feature and Torb's imminent rework, might have been subject to a few delays. Torb's rework in particular seems to be taking its time, with Scott Mercer detailing that it probably won't be in the next big PTR patch. Now as for the cause of these delays, we can't know for absolute certain, but it was interesting to hear Matt Hawley talk about how the Overwatch team had actually diverted some resources away from working on the game to helping out with Overwatch League content. But the Overwatch team uh, there, the Overwatch League last fall was like the actual employees in the Overwatch League was very small, and Team Four helped carry a bunch of the the weight and help in terms of team branding and all that stuff. That was a conscious decision where we pivoted dev resources to help make sure Overwatch League was successful instead of you know perhaps working on a new feature uh, that we, we could have potentially added to the game. Now that has actually received some criticism from fans, particularly in our comment section from the relevant video, but there are actually a couple of ways to look at that decision. Firstly, from a purely business point of view, and I'm just trying to explain the decision, not necessarily defend it here, it probably did make sense to prioritize a brand new eSport product over some other features to get it off the ground working properly. From everything we know about the development of Overwatch as a game, it does always appear to be the case of managing priorities as they simply can't just work on everything all at the same time. And the second way of looking at it is that the work that the dev team put into the Overwatch League will have positive knock-on effects for the general player base in the form of new features. And the biggest and most obvious example of that will be the fleshed out replay or demo system when it does arrive. As Matt Hawley notes in the interview, a lot of the work that went into the Overwatch League Observer Tool is intrinsically linked with those features that we all want. Now yes, he did say that what they have behind the scenes is not very user friendly or ready for public consumption yet, but because most of the groundwork is already done and the Overwatch League is over until next season, the addition of those replay tools is a big change that I see happening sooner rather than later. I do actually expect to see them before the new year, perhaps being revealed at BlizzCon along with a new hero and maybe a new cinematic, something like that. Now I don't think I have to go on too long about the benefits of a replay system, we've long argued for it on this channel, I think that when it does arrive it will be the best teaching and learning tool available for many players. I'll personally be downloading every Jonak and Ryu J Hong VOD I can get my hands on, and I think main tank players in particular will benefit a lot from replays as I think it's actually one of the hardest roles to learn properly. Now, as for other big features that we could be getting, I'm just going to play you the clip of Matt Hawley's answer to my question about roll queue and LFG and how it's observable that Blizzard like to start small as far as changes go and then ramp up their potential impact iteratively. First of all, we, we talk a lot internally about um, trying to take a crawl, walk, run approach to things. And I think if you look at the, the LFG and endorsement system that we put in back in June, that's sort of our crawl. Yeah. Like it was the, what is what did we think is the uh, critically important part of the feature that we need to implement to start to move the needle in terms of whether it was toxicity or whether it was you know trying to have um, you know better games just overall for everybody uh, we have plans and I'm not going to go into the details of what those plans are but we have plans for the, the walk and the run of that as well and then it's again it comes back to what we were just talking about where in the priority list do we decide to say okay now it's time to move on to the, the LFG endorsements walk yeah right okay great. thank you so as you will have heard, Matt describes this iterative development process as crawl, walk and run, with the current LFG system we have being the crawl example in answers to things like role queue or more organised team play in Overwatch's rank system. So that leaves us with the burning question, what shape do those walk and run iterations take? As Matt very coyly wouldn't be drawn into details about that, this is the part where we think it's reasonable to extrapolate somewhat. Any new feature from this point will be more impactful than 
LFG was. There's a very big list of popular community ideas that it could very well be. Like I said earlier, maybe an actual role queue or team queue or perhaps even both. A comprehensive clan system or a well-developed weekend tournament feature. The key piece of information to take away from Matt's answer is the scale of the impact that any new change or feature will have on the game moving forward. If I had to put money down on what I think is likely to happen, I think that a proper role queue and a clan system will make their way into the game at some point, and those two would certainly have a bigger impact on the game than LFG ever did. And the reason I think that's the case is that those two ideas most closely resemble the evolution of the ideas that LFG started. They seem to me to be very much the walk and the run expressions of queuing by what role you want to play when you're solo queuing and the desire for a more organized team environment. Matt confirmed that they do have plans in place, and these two ideas seem to me to be the most likely. As for which one would come first, or which one is the walk and which one is the run, your guess is as good as mine. Now for the second part of the video, I'm actually going to respond to what Scott Mercer had to say regarding several questions to possible changes to ranked, and in particular the talking point of a map veto. Now AlphaCast actually first raised this issue with Scott, and I used my question to try and expand on it a little bit. Now there was some confusion in our comment section about exactly what a map veto is or how it would work. Well, essentially it's a very simple idea and it would take the shape of all the players in a competitive lobby being able to vote on what map to play the match out on before the match started. So currently when we all play ranked, the matchmaker just tries to find you an even match and the map and the game mode that you play on is entirely random. I think it would be a good idea, and many other people do as well, that players be given an extra layer of agency and control over the matches that they play in. One of the easiest and most impactful ways you can do that is by allowing all the players to vote on what map and mode they want to play, or in some cases what map and mode they want to avoid. And it's that aspect of it that I think Scott had the biggest problem with. In the interview I joked about never wanting to play 2CP for example. Now jokes aside, that is a sentiment that I do have about Overwatch. I would much rather, given the choice, play the other modes in competitive over Assault, and the reasons for that aren't irrational as far as I'm concerned. I do think, for for example, that the game mode is fantastic at the pro level. The mode's unique win condition of having to be very disciplined in the alt economy and the required methodical team fragging to capture a point works very well with two highly skilled and organized pro teams. But we all know that that's not how solo queue matches are played oftentimes. Because fundamental synergies and team play is quite rare in public matches, modes that require those things as an essential part of how you play them tend to suffer a little bit with Assault being the most prominent example. Essentially, a map veto would allow players not to play the modes that they didn't like. Or to put it a better way, it would give them the ability to choose to play more of what they did like. Now the byproduct of that, and I would actually put money down on this, is that players would choose to play the other modes a lot more and 2CP a lot less. Now Scott's answer as to why they haven't implemented a feature like this as of yet is that they don't want to just discard a mode that people don't like to play what they would much rather do is change the mode so that people enjoyed playing it more. Now in just one person's humble opinion, here's why I think that's actually a mistake. Firstly, despite me ragging on it for a couple of minutes, I don't actually think Assault needs major changes. The problem isn't the mode or its basic functionality, it's to do with context. The mode is excellent in organized play, but not well suited for random teams of strangers, which is what solo queue is. A cleaner solution than making big sweeping changes, at least in my opinion, is to give players more agency over their own experience in recognition of those contextual differences. A map veto, even a fairly simplistic one, like the one that Call of Duty has had for almost its entire life, wouldn't actually just delete Assault from the game anyway. I'm pretty sure Horizon is still a fairly popular map and would actually get voted over some of the other maps and modes if it came to it. In short, it's not really about removing 2CP, it's about giving players more of what they want, and I don't know of any context in where that's a bad decision. You guys will have to let me know how you feel about this whole issue in the comments section down below. And while you're there, tell me what new addition to the game, like clans or a proper role queue, would have the biggest positive impact on your Overwatch experience. And that's about it for today's video guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating. If you never want to miss another video of ours again, please click the bell icon next to the subscribe button on our channel to join the notification squad, you'll be in great company. And finally, please follow the, your Overwatch Twitter, it's where you can find updates about new videos and other cool stuff. I've been Eddie the Chump and until next time, 